In this video, we're going to look at joint variation. That's where we have a combination of direct and inverse variation. Um, we have several different types of variation going on within the same problem. So it's, it's where we have more than two variables related. Um, and so let's just kind of jump into this example. We're just going to do one example. And this it says the number of vibrations per second of a guitar string varies directly with the square root of the tension and inversely with the length of the string. So let's kind of let's kind of try to flesh this out. I'm going to kind of almost break the problem in here because this part up here above my red line tells us the structure of our equation. We're not going to have just y equals kx. We're not going to have just y equals k over x. But we have all sorts of stuff going on here. So let's just kind of um, try to interpret what's happening. The number of vibrations per second, the pitch, that's going to be our y value, okay? Because it varies directly. In other words, it depends on the square root of the tension, okay? We can call the square root of the tension, we can call that our x, and then varies inversely with the length of the string. We can call that L. We'll have to introduce some other variable. I don't care what we use. So I'm just going to kind of read through this, and I'm going to write the equation as I'm reading it. So the number of vibrations per second, which is the pitch of a guitar string, it's going to vary directly with the square root of the tension and inversely with the length of the string. So let me just kind of go over with, I'm going to kind of try to be color-coded here. We had a green X and then a blue L. Now, that part above the line helped us set up our, the, the structure of our equation. Now, the next part, and I'm going to kind of break it into a part as well. If the number of vibrations, actually I'll just highlight this next part. If the number of vibrations is 50, when the tension is 225 and the length is 60, Basically, that's the information that we need to find our k value, okay? That's before we actually even answer what this question's asking. So let's kind of fill in what we know here. It says, if the number of vibrations per second is 50, well, the number of vibrations per second, that was our y value, that's our pitch. We're trying to figure out what k is. As when the tension is 225, remember, we define tension as x. And then the length of the string is 0.60 meters. So we've, we've kind of set up everything we know in here, and now we can solve for this k value. So I'm going to have 50 equals k times the square root of 225 is 15, and then I'm going to divide by 0.6. If I do all of my solving there, if I multiply each side of the equation by 0.6, actually I can do the math on this real quick. Let me kind of come up here. If I multiply by 0.6 on each side, I believe we get 30 equals k times 15. And I'm going to divide by 15 on each side and get that k is 2. That is our constant of variation. So now, we, we did all that work to figure out what k is. So we have y equals k times the square root of x. And that's all going to be divided by that L value. Now, now that I have that K value, we can actually answer this last question. It says, find the number of vibrations per second. In other words, the Y. We're trying to find the pitch. When the tension is 196. And the length of the string is 0.65. So all I would do at this point, we have everything we need. This is just a big thing that needs to get punched into your calculator. And once you do that, you should get roughly 43.08. And don't forget what we're actually looking for. It says the number of vibrations per second. So that would be vibrations per second.